Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to play with one of Knit Pick's new yarn lines, the Simply Wool line that comes in a lot of natural colors of wool. This worsted weight yarn is 100% eco wool and today we are going to over dye the color Winkle using some leftover food coloring. In Dye Pot Weekly number 35, we mixed 12 different colors of Kool-Aid plus food coloring to hand paint a beautiful rainbow. There are tiny amounts of this food coloring left, and so I thought it would be fun to use a paintbrush to paint some of these colors onto the dry yarn in some little specks to give sort of a subtle rainbow speckled gradient. I decided to start with the dry yarn because I thought it would make it easier for us to create small speckles. So for example, you know, just by sticking my paintbrush in, I can add this dot, these dots of color to the yarn. And I don't think you can even really see it very well on camera. There we go. I'm adding these tiny dots of color to the yarn. Since these colors were mixed with Kool-Aid, there should be enough acid in here for these colors to bind to the yarn. And so if I continue sort of doing this around the whole yarn, making sure, you know, to also hit the underside, we should end up with some really cool rainbowed specks on this gray, sort of gray-ish tan background. And a little bit of the color goes a long way. Sometimes when I press onto the yarn, the, the colors beat up a tiny bit at first. But we are getting some really, really nice coverage with these specks. And, you know, I'm needing to sort of move this around to make sure I get specks all the way through the region. We don't want too many plain patches. but. You know, this is just a fun, fun way to play around with this. Have I, have I done speckles like this on dry yarn yet? I don't think so. But, yeah, and we can go around and add some other colors in the end, but I think this is just sort of a nice, fun, subtle way to kick up the yarn and not kick up, sort of pump up the volume on our yarn. But if you want to see how I mix these colors, then you should check out Dye Pot Weekly number 35. Um, in, that, in that video, I mixed all 12 colors, and I will also have on in the video description a link to the blog post where that I was referencing as I was mixing these colors, because that sort of shows how the colors were inspired. I do have some water on hand to help me sort of access so I could wash the brush in between, but when I'm doing neighboring colors, I don't mind getting a little bit of color mixing. I will likely need to go through some of these areas. Some of these are going to end up being rather subtle, but I think overall to be really beautiful. So this is literally, I'm literally, you know, running the paint in. You know, I have less than, of some of these colors, I probably only have one or two milliliters of the dye left, but that is plenty for speckles. Now, I think that if I were to start with, say, um, if I had started with, instead of using this dry yarn, if instead I had started with wet yarn, I could still do some speckling, but I think that the colors would spread out a bit more. And the fact that this yarn is dry means that the colors are sort of staying a bit more where I'm putting them. But you could also use a larger brush for larger specks. Um, all of that is really a personal personal preference. And then of course you can do things as dense or non-dense 
as you like. That is another uh, form of preference. Uh, the nice thing is that if I'm getting some splotches off of my hands, uh, since it's dry, those are sort of showing up in small little specks as well. But anyway, I am going to continue around like this until we've done all 12 colors on this gray yarn. But, oh, I think I'm a little out of frame with the red, but it helps that these colors are fairly concentrated. Uh, I started off mixing two to four packets of Kool-Aid in the dry, in a half a cup of water. And then I added lots of drops of food coloring to that, so there's a lot of color in here. What a very subtle, icky, sticky mess. Let me zoom in a bit to take you around our speckled rainbow. So we go from red, get more orange into our yellow specks, the greens and blues, and some of these purpley colors that some of them read a little gray. But ultimately, we have this really, really pretty speckled gradient. And by gradient, I mean that there's a gradient of the colors that go around the skein, but you would get, you know, it's a variegated yarn, so then as you're, as you're using it, the, the colors would mix and you could get something really fun. I took care to get coverage from each of these colors throughout the yarn, and you saw me go over it multiple times looking for big sort of gray patches. Okay, there I might need a few more. But overall, I think that, okay, maybe I'll add a couple more in there. Overall, I got some really nice coverage. So I'm gonna go through and touch up in a couple places, and then we're gonna get ready to steam this yarn. This yarn ultimately is very dry. There is very, very little liquid in it. Therefore, I am going to steam the color in a steamer basket instead of the microwave because I don't want to risk scorching the yarn. My steamer pot is ready to go. And as I am putting the yarn in, it's possible some of the yellow colors could bleed into other sections. But I'm not going to try to worry about that too much and just sort of plop the yarn in, and I'm gonna let the steam for 20 minutes. 20 minutes have passed, and I am going to turn off the heat on our steam basket. Now, I am always curious what the water looks like beneath, and I see no color down there. So that means there wasn't a lot of, say, condensation and drip down of our dyes. The yarn itself is warm, but definitely feels a bit damp. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing color transfer, oof, from onto my hand or anything. I'm gonna let this sit in here for a couple minutes to cool off a little bit before I transfer it into a bowl. All right, I can comfortably handle it. And the yarn, I'm not sure if you can see, the yarn at the bottom is a lot wetter than the yarn at the top. Um, because, you know, it had more access to the steam. But I'm going to now let this cool completely so then we can wash the yarn. Washing this yarn is a little more involved than normal, mainly because it is pretty dry overall. 
And so in order to wash it, that means that I have to wet it. So right here, I've got just some cool tap water and I am submerging the yarn that we dyed. And the thing that's great about this is that I am not seeing any color come into the dye bath. This is great news because that means that even with minimal water, we were able to get the colors to bind to our yarn. Since I used Kool-Aid based dyes, there is some other stuff in here that isn't food coloring. So I'm going to use a tiny bit of clear dish soap to rinse out this yarn and get everything else out. And then we will hang up our rainbow speckled yarn to dry. Here is our finished dried yarn. We used concentrated food coloring that had been mixed with Kool-Aid, so our concentrated dye had both food coloring drops and citric acid in it already. With a paintbrush, we added little specks of color to the yarn. And this gave us some really awesome discrete speckles. Some of the brighter colors are more obvious on this gray backdrop, but if you look closely, you can still see the, the, col the colors that are a little less vibrant on the yarn nicely. Normally, when I'm doing speckling techniques with 100% non-superwash wool, like this one, if you, when you try specks on wet yarn, you'll get the, the dyes will spread out a little further. They don't strike to non-superwash fibers as quickly as they do to superwash yarns. But since the yarn was dry, the food coloring really couldn't spread out very far. It pretty much stayed where we placed it with our paintbrush. And that allowed us to get some really, really teeny, discreet, dark speckles of color on this yarn. And I just think that that is awesome and has amazing potential for many types of yarn. As long as you have acid in your food coloring, since we were, since we obviously did not pre-soak the yarn, then once you steam the yarn, everything should work and you'll end up with a stunning yarn like this. I would not microwave a yarn that was this dry, so I recommend using a steamer basket or something to set the color, but I am beyond excited with this way of applying dye to yarn and I'm really excited to explore this further on all different types of yarns. Just look at these little specks of color. We did that with a paintbrush. The base of this yarn is a solid color, but there's no reason why you couldn't use this as an over dyeing technique for a variegated yarn that you hand dyed if you want specks in one specific area or another. There are so many potentials with this technique. I ultimately think that the color transitions will feel pretty subtle on the final product. We, we used 12 different shades of food coloring here to create this speckled gradient. The overall project won't have a gradient, but there's a gradient as the colors transition from one to another. And so I think that it could be a pretty subtle, but still colorful, beautiful final product. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will check out the Chemnitz Patreon page, where you can support more fun dyeing videos like these in exchange for some fantastic perks that include early access to videos, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. The link to the Patreon is in the video description. Thank you so much for watching this video.